Good afternoon, everyone. Have you ever wondered where we would find the new material to build the next generation of microprocessors? We found the answer in the human body. In our DNA. I am Mohammed Nabi, representing my University of Hilwet, and I stand before you today to talk about DNA computers. Here's what we will go through this presentation. We have a little introduction in history, a couple of applications, and some pros and cons. First, let me make you to a trip to the past, a couple of decades ago, we first had a computer that only stored two gigabytes, which was exceptional at the time. And right now we have memory cards with two terabytes, a thousandfold. Manufacturers always keep thinking of something that is small in size, abundant, and can store a lot of information. And they found that thing in the DNA. So first, what is DNA computing? DNA computing is all about making the DNA do what normal computer does by taking some instructions as an input, processes it, and produces an output. Here is the structure of the DNA in our chromosomes. That famous double helix form, sugar phosphate backbone, and four nitrogen bases. Guanine binds to cytosine, while adenine binds to thymine. Those four bases combine to form proteins, proteins which give instructions to run a completely a human body. But how can we make the DNA turn into a computer? We all know the main language understood by computers is zero and one. So if we consider the AT binding as zero and the TA binding is one, and the same goes for G and C. We can consider this as the binary language of the DNA computer where we can store a lot of information. This is really genius. We have a very interesting character. This is Dr. Leonard Edelman. He is the inventor of the first DNA computer a quarter of a century ago. Now we know the idea, but how can we benefit from this? First, Beating cancer, the nightmare of all nations. We can synthesize DNA computers in lab, also known as DNA nanorobots. We can synthesize them so that they can they measure the concentration of certain molecules called markers, which is how cancer is diagnosed anyway, and it automatically interacts with the cancer cell's activities and activate its normally occurring enzymes causing self-destruction to tumor cells. Another well-known disease is the diabetes. DNA is synthesized in lab and we can measure the glucose level and, it, and the computer automatically provides the amount of insulin needed at time to the patient. We can also detect different strains of viruses which are when accurately known the treatment is now possible more than any time before. But why did we specifically pick the DNA for computing? Benefiting from its long-lasting stability up to millions of years, even more a dinosaur can live. Plus its storage capacity around 700 terabytes. And also we can store a lot of information in liquid form as the size of tablespoon. But of course life doesn't give you what you want. This technique is too expensive and takes a lot of time to prepare. But anyway, we are the biotechnologists. We have the knowledge and we have the skills and we can do it. Hope you enjoyed that and thanks for listening.